When I talk about Lake Neusiedl, I mainly mean the eastern part of Lake Neusiedl because in this area, it's called Seewinkel in German, we have several salt lakes. And these salt lakes, they attract a variety of birds. And it's a bird watcher's paradise. So <laughs> if you come to Lake Neusiedl, um, you should know it's super flat, but because it's flat, it's super windy too. Um, so it can be super nice to, to ride your bicycle, but it can be super annoying too. I wanted to show you the male of the red-footed falcons feeding its chick, chicks. I waited for almost an hour now, nothing happened. So I said, sun is setting, I will head to a different spot. And as soon as I packed my stuff and I made 10 steps, the male came. <laughs> of course, as always in wildlife photography. And he had a mouse in its beak. It sat down 20 meters in front of me and was feeding the chicks. Yeah, that happens all the time in wildlife photography. Um, there's nothing to do about that. Just accept it. <clears throat> so if you come to Lake Noise, you'll take your binoculars, um, take a scope if you have, because this area is mainly for bird watching. It's a bird watcher's paradise it's okay-ish for bird photography. It's not too bad. Can you hear this? Turtle dove. Beautiful. I love the call. There are also some, some bee eaters gathering there in these trees. Um, there are many starlings. Just had to look at this pigeon, <laughs> but just a, a wood dove or wood pigeon, however you call it. And another advice, if you come to this area, take lots of water and use a sunblocker. It's always hot in summertime. Today it's 33 again. And if you have to walk or ride your bike, it's necessary to have enough water, especially if you carry lots of photo gear. If you plan on coming to this area, you should come at the end of April, beginning of May. That's normally the best time of the year for bird photography. Uh, you have all the migrating birds, they rest here. You have thousands of rough and all different kind of waders, plus the breeding birds in their bag. Um, depending on the water level, you have green toads calling, the fire-bellied toads or the red-bellied toad. Um, you have uh, bittern calling everywhere if the water level is high and it's spectacular so the last years it's a bit sad because water level was really low and all these little lakes they were dried out but every now and then there's a high water level in spring and this is truly amazing sadly uh, you can't get lower than this. It's, it's a pity. You can't um, take photos on, on the ground, on the eye level of, of the birds. And also, there's not much water. Birds are super far away, so 
<laughs> I guess. Um, it's time to take some minimalistic shots. I just turned around and look who I found. There's a tree frog. It's a gray one. This is so amazing. They love to sit in these wooden birding hides. So if you come here, check out the hides if there are any tree frogs. Look at the colors, I mean, that's amazing. And this is what I love about Lake Noisy. It's so flat here that you get the most amazing colors. It's pretty late now um, and people came which is a pity because the wood is so shaky that I couldn't film and then an, a, friend came, a friend came and we were talking all the time so some yeah it's gone um, apparently the, there was one nice scene when um, the Sun was reflecting in the water it looked amazing and everything in the picture was dark except for the sun the reflection of the sun um, but yeah no duck wanted to to go through this spot so no picture of this um, i got one picture which is a bit interesting it's not that amazing maybe you can see it probably not there's one duck in between um, these reeds um, so I tried you can see the reed over there I tried to take some pictures through the reed and of the silhouette of a duck maybe we can find some owls if so um, they like to sit very still and it, it's amazing how long they can sit without moving at all um, and you can use a remote to take pictures of owls when they're sitting um, I took pictures up to two seconds and they're still sharp um, so that's possible and later um, when it's even darker I will have a look for toads <laughs> I'm just walking around and having a look if there's a toad sitting on the road because I just wanted to try um, some to get some pictures of them. Um, I will use some artificial light, uh, my headlamp probably, and let's see if we find any and if so, what kind of pictures we are going to take. I found something, it's pretty cool. Look. Can you see this? That's a spade foot toad. Amazing animals. If you grab them, um, they will excrete something which smells like garlic. That's why they're called garlic toad in Germany. I love them. They're super rare in Germany, haven't seen many, but here in Austria at Lake Neusiedl. They're quite common, 
Right, look, it's a beautiful toad. Ah, it doesn't. It has red, red coloration and a beautiful pattern. The eyes, they're like cat eyes. Such an amazing animal. And they dig them, themselves into the ground. They need soft ground, sandy ground. It's such a fascinating animal. I really love them. I stopped um, in a village called Apetlon because I wanted to take pictures of the white storks on the roofs. They're nesting on the roofs and they're also sleeping there. And there was the possibility to take the silhouette of a white stork against the moon. I thought, wow, that's going to be amazing. I always wanted to take a picture like that. Well, it turned out <laughs> you need to have a full moon or yeah nothing like that what we have it looks like an egg and it's just not nice <laughs> I don't know so I, I have to come back at some point when when there's a full moon good morning <laughs> uh, I just had a look um, for hours the sun is rising now uh, but I couldn't find any any owls. Um, the most common owl species here is the long-eared owl. Um, normally you can find them more or less everywhere, especially in spring when the chicks are calling. They are everywhere. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm heading to the spot where I've been yesterday because a friend is doing some research over there. Over there they are catching birds and I'll have a look. I just found some shrikes um, in these bushes and I took some pictures out of the car. I'm using the car as a blind, which is nice because um, the birds, they are not disturbed. Driving around in this area is super nice. It's fun. Um, you can see so much. The most common animals, I would say, are brown hare and roe deer, but also birds. I mean, of course, you can see white storks, uh, lapwings, there are quite a few, frikes, pheasants, um, but much, much more. And yeah, don't forget your binoculars and it is like a safari. It's it's just nice driving around, having a look. I enjoy this a lot. these sounds farmers try to protect their harvest their grapes <clears throat> and frighten the starlings I mean I can understand them because they are not just a few starlings they are tens of thousands of starlings gathering together sleeping in the reed beds and they will eat a lot they will eat a lot but still somehow it's a bit weird because there's the national park and in between there are these yards of wine and even directly next to some salt lakes where there's super rare species there are these wine yards and they try to get rid of the birds <clears throat> and these 
protected areas they attract birds so that's that's a big conflict